Hey everybody, Travis from MugCreek.com. I want to do a quick review of the Vortec Diamondback Tactical uh, Scope here. This is the 6 to 24 time zoom uh, by the 50 millimeter rifle scope. This is a first focal plane. I don't know if you can see that, uh, which was very intentional. I wanted to do a first focal plane. Most scopes I've shot with have always been the second focal plane, so I want to try that out. And then this is the EBR-2C MRAD reticle which so it's in mills as opposed to middle of angle um, uh, which is kind of my preference but they do sell an MOA minute of, minute of angle uh, version of it too like I said this is just my preference and so um, that's why I went with so I want to do a quick unboxing of it and then I'll uh, do some range stuff as well and I'm gonna show you kind of a little trick to uh, mount these if you already have a current rifle scope on it has the same tube size and everything of, of ways to do that so that uh, it saves you some time so um, anyway uh, go through some of the specs real quick this is you know we're actually gonna flip this around here that's more specs on the back here I don't know if you can see that let me show you real quick too this is the uh, DBK-10029 so that is the actual uh, model number of it and uh, uh, full disclosure, they did uh, give me a discount on this. I just told them I had to do YouTube videos, and and so I did get a discount on this. There was no expectation of as far as the review goes of what it would look like. So I'm going to give you my honest opinion on this, and you know if it's something you like. At the end of the day, I don't have a lot of experience with uh, um, Vortec right now, so this is going to be an experience for me too. But if it's something you like, then go support them, and it might answer some questions you might have. So tube size is 30 millimeter. Looks like the length is 14.5 uh, inches. The weight is 24.6 ounces, which for this type of tactical scope, I liked. Uh, the current scope I have on my gun is a millet, and I want to say it's about almost double that uh, as far as the weight goes. And the size, just looking at it, uh, I'll do some comparisons later, but some the size difference is huge. I mean, this is a lot smaller, which I liked. I wanted something that uh, my son could also manage well and be okay with. So. Eye relief is 3.9 inches, field of view at 100 yards is 18 uh, to 4.5 feet. I don't uh, pretend to know exactly how to interpret that, but uh, adjustment gra graduation is a point M, uh, or 0.1 mils or MRAD. So that's pretty typical with the most of your mil scopes is 0.1 uh, adjustments. And, uh, you know, so each small adjustment is 0.1 and then they're usually in 10, obviously, and then you can go... Uh, you know for a full range there so uh, travel port per rotation uh, six MRAD so one full rotation of the of the uh, dial is going to give you six total windage travel is 19 MRAD and then uh, total elevation is uh, 19 as well and then what I've done is I actually have a 20 minute of angle um, adjustment on my uh, uh, scope rings and, and on my base so that it angles it down just a little bit more and that gives me a little bit more elevation travel out of it and that's why I did that so uh, included accessories include, includes a lens crab fiber um, microfiber lens cloth and sunshade lens covers I should say uh, full disclosure I did already open this and look at it because I couldn't wait so um, this is the XD so it's a premium optical system select glass elements blah 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 you can read that uh, nitrogen gas purged, uh, fully multi-coated, multi and shockproof. You know, I'd say this is pretty standard in the industry anymore for the most part. Um, it seems like a lot of your scopes do the same type of thing. So that's what it looks like uh, on the cover there. Pretty sick looking. And let's go ahead and crack this thing open. So like I said, I did already open this, so rubber bands are missing, that's why. So we'll pop that off. Well, there's the scope. There's just inside the box. Looks like that's your. Yeah, that's actually a pretty decent. I think it's actually a full-on clever, but uh, I'll pull that out here in a second. But that's, that's a pretty decent size microfiber cloth, I'd say. You got your um, manual, probably warranty information in there. And one of the things that attracted me to Vortec is they. I know they've got a great warranty. I've never personally tried it, but I've just heard of people that have had issues that you know they're great and. In honoring that, so there is your lens cap, not lens cap, but your uh, sunshade right here. I, I'm kind of mixed feelings on these. I've shot with them on, I've shot with them off. I tend to leave them off if I can, 
but uh, pretty typical. Um, I don't know if it's sure on the length, I should grab a tape measure, but I'd say probably about three inches or so. All right, maybe two and a half, but uh, let's take a look at the actual scope itself. I'll just leave this out. So I'll scoot this back. Let's go ahead and pull this bad boy out. So there we have it. I'm going to leave this on for now. Um, just a little warning there to properly mount your rifle scope. It tells you the torque stuff. I believe that is just probably on the, you know, exceed 12 on the rings, so you probably need to follow your gun manufacturer's suggestion on mounting the base to your gun. So, uh, anyway, here's the scope covers. Just kind of a typical, some people like these and like to carry these out in the field instead of uh, scope caps. I did get some like quick release scope caps as well. If you prefer that, that's actually pretty easy to pop on and off as well. So, pretty typical. I wouldn't say it's anything extraordinary by any means, you know, it's kind of what you see. All right, we're gonna move some of this stuff here so we can get this in all of its glory here. All right, so this is it. It is really not that bad. I mean, you look at the length on this. Like I said, this is what we said. This was 14.5 inches long. That's actually for a 24, for a six by 24 uh, zoom adjustment. That's pretty dang good. Like that, and that's one of the things that appealed to me about this. I just like the fact that it wasn't like ridiculous size, but can still give you some power. And I, I pulled this out as the sun was going down and I, I just wanted to check it. I was like, you know, I'm just curious. I want to see how this looks. Um, you know, with the sun going down with lower light and it seemed to do pretty well. I, I did have a little bit of trouble. And part of that, I was having trouble getting the parallax dialed in here. Um, not so much getting it dialed in, but just kind of getting the focus in on it because I, you know, and I was just doing it out of my garage. And so I maybe had 50 yards or so to work with. And I felt like it was a little, um, and, and like I said, this was just me messing around and it was dark in my garage. So it was kind of hard to see, but I felt like it gathered light pretty well. I felt like when it did get out to, you know, your 24 times, it, it was having a hard time being kind of in focus, but that was probably more user error than anything. But I, I imagine it may have a little bit of trouble. But honestly, like when I had it down to six and even twelve, like it it was fine, and uh, so it seemed to do well in low light. I guess is moral of the story here. So um, I did like that. Okay, but uh, you know, and like I said, this is pretty typical in your tactical rifle scopes. So here is your this is your Mills adjustment here, or MRAD, uh, Mill Radians, I believe is what it stands for. And like I said, it, it goes around. It looks like it gives you. Let's say six, uh, yeah, six MRADs total. So each one of these little hash marks here is 0.1 mils, and then you know obviously you get to 0.5 mils, and then one mil, and so on and so forth. And like I so said, you get to six mils total adjustment, which it'd be kind of nice if that was more either like five or ten or something like that. But I'm sure there's a reason for it. But uh, that's just a minor thing. Um, Oh, and then it gives you the right, kind of says right and then left. I kind of like that they explain that on here, showing you which way to go. So if you need to go up, boom, right, boom. So I do like that. Um, yeah, so these are locking, and I, I don't have a screwdriver right now, but I'm assuming with most of these, you just unscrew this, and then that's how you can re-zero this, and then it stays you know, on. So it's, it'd be pretty easy. Like this doesn't take a lot of, there's maybe a little, I'll say mush, but a little bit of uh, give there before you click it over. It seems to line up pretty well. Uh, you know, what I've noticed with all these types like this is there's kind of a little give there. And so just kind of get it there. So that would be 0.5 mil adjustment. Um, if I'm going up, it looks like so. That uh, looks like it's back to zero, but then, you know, once you get it dialed in, get it sighted in, you'd want to unscrew this, move this to the zero hash so that you're completely zeroed in. And so this is your parallax here. Looks like it has 15, oh, even clear down to basically 10 or probably zero here. And then you get 10 all the way up to 300, then in the infinity. So anything past 300 yards, you just want to go up to that essentially. And you can, you know, I don't think these always have to be 100%, but it's going to help 
you'd be able to see your uh, crosshairs a little bit better if you can kind of get it close. So downside of this for a hunting scope is that's just one more thing you might have to play with. I'll probably leave it right at about 100 and just leave it there. Should be close enough for the most part. And if I feel like I need to adjust it, I can go up or down with it. But uh, maybe that's one issue there. Um, the zoom adjustment here, you know, this is a little harder to, I wouldn't say hard, but it, you know, it's definitely takes a little more effort to turn that, which I personally like because I feel like that just makes it um, um, less likely to kind of get messed up. So here's what I like. I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm probably going to have to take this up to the range. But so the cool thing about first focal plane, so that is at six zoom there, six times zoom there. So with my current scope, this would be, the reticle would look the exact same no matter what zoom I was on. And I believe with my scope specifically, so if you're dealing in the second focal plane, you pretty much, let me dial this down, see if that helps. So you can actually see the uh, reticle here, uh, a little bit maybe, but uh, with a second focal plane, that is always gonna stay the same size essentially. So usually what that means is when you're using um, the mills on it, you know, if it's got uh, a mill dot on it like mine did, um, it would only be accurate with the mill dots if it, like on my scope, for example, it was a, I think times 16, it could go up to 16 zoom, and it was only accurate at 16 zoom if you're gonna start using the mill dots in the scope on the reticle, and so that was one issue that's kind of a, a problem there with that. Obviously, you could still adjust this, and if as long as you're, you know, working in the same, uh, you know, your distances and you got that, you can adjust that and that would be fine, but with this, and if you want to do any kind of holdover ranging or anything like that, like it would not be accurate unless you were at the full zoom. So here's the cool thing. I'm going to try to do this while I haven't focused as best I can here. And you can kind of watch. So I'm going to go up to 24. So watch that reticle as it slowly gets bigger. Man, this is harder than it looks. It doesn't help that the uh, eye relief gets worse here. So I don't know if you can see that now. Let's get it here. There we go. So now, look how big that is now. You know, and this is not the best here. But anyway, uh, I'll do this outdoors and try to do it when I'm on target, and you can kind of get a better idea here. So, come on. where do we go? But you can see that, and you can see how it's how it looks there. So anyway, so it gets bigger as you go zoom out, and then as you zoom back down, you see how the reticle still gets smaller. So the idea behind that is that really the holdover method with this scope would work in any. Uh, any zoom mode. So if you're at six times, it's going to be fine. If you're at 24, so it's going to adjust based on whatever your zoom is. You know, probably out of habit, I'd probably still try to shoot and based off of one range there because, you know, is it possible with manufacturing stuff it could be a little off? Yeah, I'd say it could be, you know. But uh, I like kind of the Christmas tree. You can see it there, the Christmas tree reticle there too. So it gives you some windage hashes down toward the bottom there. So you can adjust for windage as well on this. And that's something I like. My current reticle is just the mill dots. And it's just up and down, uh, you know, across the crosshairs. Not it doesn't give you that little Christmas tree look down at the bottom for windage. So I like that a lot. Uh, like I said, the, the clarity so far looked pretty good. Um, you know, this is a, I think it's about a $500 scope retail. I wouldn't say is it, you know, is it the best one? Probably not, you know, but for an entry level kind of tactical long range shooting scope, I think this is a good little scope and I think you'd be real happy with it um, based on what I could tell. I'll do some shooting stuff, but I want to do just a general unboxing to kind of give my first impressions and just show you what it looks like out of the box. And so far I like what I'm, what I'm seeing here. So um, no real complaints here. It seems to do okay with light like the coating so for a base model entry level you know I hate the entry level when you're spending $500 but for an entry level ish um, uh, tactical long range scope I think this is a good one and I'm glad I was tempted to go with the 16 times I'm actually glad I went with the 24 times so uh, or up to 24 times from the 6 times so 
Anyway, I like that, but uh, and with the uh, 50 millimeter uh, front here, it should do pretty well, and the 30 millimeter tubes, it should do pretty well gathering light. So uh, we'll do some more testing later, but uh, for now, this is the unboxing of the uh, Vortec Diamondback Tactical 6x24 by 50 millimeter rifle scope um, with the uh, first focal plane or FFP. So thank you, and uh, check back later.